Hey everybody, welcome back. Hey, Mike. I'm here with my boys, PD and Cal. We're talking about the Marvel's most important sidekick. Still hasn't made his MCU de debut. We're talking about who? Rick Jones. And of course, I got my boys, Cal and PD. Say what's up. What up? Ready to rock. Our resident experts on Rick Jones. Is he even needed in the MCU? Huh? PD, what's your take on this madness? Uh, ultimately, I've always wanted to do Rick Jones, but it goes into a territory that is kind of passe only for the fans that want to remember that for some reason Alicia looks exactly like um, Sue Richards, right? Stanley has this thing where the, the characters have lookalikes. He's done it many a time, and Rick Jones is one of them. But he didn't introduce Rick Jones as a lookalike. Rick Jones was introduced in The Hulk, and he is the catalyst for Bruce Banner becoming The Hulk. And then he becomes his closest friend, his only friend. It was like the first sort of relationship. So. Ultimately, it went from the Hulk having a kind of a sidekick or someone who's a watcher over him to like issues like three becomes Rick Jones and his Hulk, right? And then because the book wasn't selling, the book changed again. But Rick Jones and the Hulk were like inseparable until it got canceled. And then you had the Avengers since the Hulk was in, no, actually in the Avengers, the Hulk is a problem. So who's there to help? Rick Jones. And Rick Jones is like, we need the Fantastic Four. And the Fantastic Four is doing their thing. Who comes? But Rick Jones is not by himself. He's with the Teen Brigade, a bunch of other kids. And they yep. get the Avengers together. And they, he is the reason. So you can't really bring him into the Avengers because the government is the reason. The, um, Nick Fury is the reason why the Avengers come together, right? So you can't initially bring him into the Marvel Universe that way because of that. But I always felt that they could brought him in by connecting to a Hulk origin where he's connected to it. You know, like that sort of thing. But well, we haven't don't... missed him though. We haven't missed him at all. I missed him. I want to do a story. I wanted them to do a story where we get to the Hulk thing or you get the where the Hulk is in like what's it, Ragnarok and Rick Jones is there and he's what's the name? Sebastian Stan. Thor hasn't met Sebastian Stan yet because he's not in the Winter Soldier. So they have an adventure where they come back to there and they're like, Winter Soldier, how'd you get your arm back? Because that's the hook of the story. Captain America, when he comes back to the Avengers, he's like, sees Rick Jones and he's like, my heart. <laughs> he has this look where he's like, Elizabeth, I'm coming to join you. No, he has this look like, He's got that Kirby. He's got that Kirby face with the with the eyes wide open and the mouth yes, open. Yeah. Like, ah! like, like, what? You come back to life, and he's like, "No, I'm I'm Rick, buddy. I'm like in the '60s style. So what are you on? I'm a, I'm you know the other thing that you look just like him. And I'm that's Rick Jones, bitch. <laughs> but he kind of he makes a connection with Cap, and at some point they work together. At some point, Cap's struggling with having a sidekick and then he go keeps going on he connects with captain marvel for a little while with rom he's been a mainstay in the marvel universe and i've always felt that you know they had a bunch of other human characters within the avengers universe like having hawkeye have wife having some of those shield agents they found ways you know you know i guess peggy carter she's too much action to say she's just a regular character so but I always felt you needed to have a regular sort of human character in this title. And Rick Jones was it. And that's what I kind of missed of having him in there because he was the catalyst. He was the guy who made the call to get the Avengers together. And the heroes answered the call. They didn't need the government to kind of do a secret program to put them together. This kid makes a call and these heroes show up. And that- What about you, Pete? Huh? What about you, Cal? What's your take on that? You do it, <laughs> he just cut me off. He just like, what about you? I'm at it with this guy. Okay. We don't, we don't, we don't need Rick Jones. Huh? So That's your find, opinion. You just let me finish my opinion for you. Just a jump on it and just be like, yo, we don't need him. All right. I'll tell you in five words. We don't need Rick Jones. Right, this guy. This guy. Cal. No, we never. It's it's hard to say that because we never had him there, and Rick Jones was such a staple of the. Rick Jones was there at the beginning of the Marvel Universe, and you know, like and like PD said, this is a guy. He's been. There's no Hulk without Rick Jones, for better or for worse. And then the stuff you know, he's you know, was uh, Bucky with Captain America partners there, 
with Captain with Captain Marvel, Rom back with the Hulk, you know, back with the Hulk again. And you know, he's, he's been a long he's been a long standing part of the Marvel universe. And he's I mean, he was instrumental in the Kree Skull War, which is something if they ever decided to do, they would have to totally, you know, I mean, Rick Jones was the reason why they won that war. So Okay, wait, 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 hold on a second. They they haven't included the X Men so far, and X Men have we, movies already. It's we not in the Kree Shri, Shri Shri War, and we don't need him. We haven't included Adam Warlock, so we don't. No, you gonna you gonna, you gonna well, see. I mean, you gonna, the majority you gonna agrees see. that clearly this character is of no use. Right? Wow. A, I, I could say I could say that about a bunch of characters that have already shown that have already shown up. I can, I mean, put it like this: the Red Skull was a great character. We got to see him in one movie, and they killed him off. And you know, and the, that, next, and the next, don't no, say no, that. No. I knew, I knew you would say that claptrap. That's not even him. For him to come over there and just be some specter telling people, "Hey, you got to go jump off a cliff." That's not the Red Skull. We're and the saying Red Skull, the Red Skull, MCU. the Red Skull. You get, you getting cut off, happy right over here. The Red Skull has been too much of a fixture of an important villain throughout the Marvel Universe, not just for Captain America, but for other villains as well, for you to just one and done him at the end of the day. Peter, you I, would like to see Rick, I, would, I would like to see Rick, I would like to see Rick this? Jones there because Rick Jones brings an element. Rick Jones brings an element of the Marvel Universe that they haven't yet tapped into. This, they've done a bunch of other stuff, but Rick Jones is another element. I mean, to be honest, even though we've had all these films, they have barely scratched the surface of what can be offered by the Marvel Universe, okay? For all, I mean, that's one of the reasons I still have a lot of hope for DC because Marvel, for all the success they've had, they barely scratched the surface on what you can do with these guys. You know, Maybe, are you agreeing with TV, that or not? Rick Jones represents a part of the Marvel <laughs> Universe. Rick Jones represents an aspect of the Marvel Universe Lord. that they haven't tapped into yet. So yeah, bring yeah, bring them in. And it's not like it's gonna be hard. You can connect them to just about every character that you've shown. He's been an Avenger, okay? He worked with Captain. He worked with Captain. We, we heard all that. We heard Avenger, Kree, Skull War, mm -hmm. and stuff like that. But the question is, what is we're what? not missing him. So we are. I am that, missing him. He was yes. just explaining to us how. No, no, it's not. We, no, not, not we are. It's not MCU. we. It's not we aren't missing him. You don't care. That's what yes. that is. <laughs> Sure it is. That's and the thing is like. Wait, the, wait, wait, wait. What did no, you say? No, what did, what did, no, what did, no. You, you said me. You kept asking me to talk. I let him finish, and I'm talking now. The thing <laughs> like this is, I'm going to the Kree Skull War. The important part that Roy Thomas and Neil Adams are saying is that yes, you have all these people with powers, but how do you say that the mankind itself is the next step that Kree and Skrulls are are have going as far as they can go? Having the human character there to point out that humans have, are in their infancy, and when we get to that next level, we still have a ways to go. So you use the regular person to say, this is the potential humans can make in that story. That's a powerful story. You don't just have, well, hey, Captain America's cool. He shows what human can do. Like, no, you show that the person that they don't even, the fact that he gets in there as just being a, uh, like a bugaboo, just somebody that comes into just an annoyance is shows you what humankind can be. That's powerful. And you don't have that's to do it. What Kyle is saying, and, and, and Kyle is not saying powerful on this character at all. I said not powerful. That is powerful as a story element of having showing that mankind, you can't, you can show mankind doing this through Rick Jones. You don't have to do it every month. The thing is like that, that how many stories to get to like what? 93 or 94 when he they utilize him that way like there's so much other thing the fact that when we when, uh, don't need that character when the hulk is locked up in the, in the in the in the in the cave or in the in the underwater thing and rick jones is sitting outside of it because they don't at night when the hulk is doing they don't want in the rampage like those moments of the whole primal aspect of the hulk so much cool stuff you could do with the character and the fact of having the stuffy like they introduce a stuffy scientist in in bruce banner and then you find out his passion when he's sitting there he's like just worried about the calculations then next you know look <laughs> there's a kid out there it's like stop everything the passion comes out it's like we gotta get this kid out of here for the bomb shut it down igor shouldn't have that guy there or whatever his name was <laughs> <laughs> He's like, keep it going. He'll be back. And then next thing you know, kid, get out of here. Get in the bunker. 
Blah, that is powerful. Kid trying to show off in front of his friends and you see what happened. And how many cool um, blasts have we already seen? We've seen a little bit in the first Hulk and then we've seen an in Indiana Jones. Like what if that was a Hulk scene, right? Well, we get to see that and we've already saw Indiana Jones survive it. So he secures Rick Jones and then Bruce Banner is just getting blasted, right? That is, oh my gosh, well, I don't even know what Cal, to do. Uh, so Cal, I mean, you want me to sum this up? And this all got me all passionate over this thing. I to, I've toned it down. I'm just saying, look, you have a character that has all this history. Don't make him into Adam Bomb. Don't make him into the, the, the rock and roll Hulk that he was at one point. Keep him human, have him in there. Have him just the mainstay in there because he was much more than like Snapper Carr in the than, in the Justice League. He was no, Snapper Carr is connected a, to them. Snapper Carr is a sidekick. Rich Jones is not. I mean, as much as I may have, he was put, he, he starts off like that, but he's too important at the end of the day to be to be a side club, like the leader of the fan club, that sort of thing. Even when they were doing the Team Brigade stuff, which was in the uh, original six issues of the Hulk. That was really where Marvel was at that time, because Marvel was bringing in the older kids. DC was like eight to eight to twelve, and the Marvel were the teenagers. Marvel was thirteen, you know. Maybe they phased out at like around eighteen, but it was like, yeah, even the, you know, as the kids, you know, you guys can come in, and it was, you know, this, this is how we're going to connect. And we got they were trying, they were speaking the language of the kids, and so on and so forth. And you know, it was new. So a lot of that stuff was, you know, a lot of that stuff was coming in. Hey, can you bring up an image of uh, Immortal Hulk? I think it's Immortal Hulk 16. Hold on. Yeah. Keep going while I'm looking. I mean, haven't they on a regular basis given him powers on uh, Marvel? I mean, wasn't he Captain America at one point? Wasn't he... Um, what, was Rick he, Jones? Uh, wasn't he the A-bomb or something like that? Yes. Well, that's... He, he got, no, that I mean, issue 16? Which at issue? one point, he... Did, uh, this should be Immortal Hulk issue sixteen. You'll know it. You'll you'll know what I'm talking about. Okay. I mean, okay. Yeah, I mean, at one point he gets powers from the Beyonder. You know, he, so he has powers for like an uh, he has powers for like an issue or something along those lines. And then he gets uh, uh yeah, he you know he gets exposed to gamma radiation like everybody else who's with the Hulk. And so he gets to be you know he gets to be a bomb. Uh, I don't know if he, I don't, I think he might've had powers one other way, but at one point he's like a recording artist and he's like this real popular, uh, he's like this real popular recording artist within the Marvel universe. He marries his, fa you know, he marries this like really hot fashion model, but there's a lot of history. There's just a lot of history with that character who, who does begin as a sidekick, turns into a partner with these guys and has a very much established history with the uh, Marvel universe. The I don't know. The, 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 the biggest trouble is that a lot of the stuff that happened that would have been great to see him in, you gave that to Nick Fury. <laughs> you know, you gave that to Nick Fury, the guy who was connected to everybody. That was Rick Jones. You decided, no, we're going to make that Nick Fury because the government has to have a hand in everything we do these days. Whereas th these characters, when they first come out, these guys are totally independent of any government. You know, they were just hanging out with Tony Stark in his mansion and they were doing things their own way before Guy Rich comes in and says, no, you guys need to, you got you guys are too powerful to be checked on your own. We need some government supervision at the end of the day. Why do we need government supervision? Nothing's ever happened. We don't care. We want to go, we want to, we want some eyes on you people. But uh, without a doubt, Rick Jones is Rick Jones is just too, he's too good of a character to keep on the sidelines. And then what, if you do bring him in, don't Zack Snyder the character, like, oh, well, you know, we can have some fun with him and kill him off. <laughs> well, this I mean, even I mean, we've even hopped over the fact that. You know, the most one of the most celebrated Marvel runs is Peter David's Hulk, and he is a mainstay of it. He is a very much a big part of that run. And when he comes back in the series, I think there's a period before he comes back where Bruce Banner has separated from gets he connects back with Betty after the whole um, Joe Fix It stuff, and he's still the Gray Hulk, and then he meets up with Betty. And at some point after that, he meets back with uh, Rick, and she, he's with Marlo already. But all this, all those tons of stories that that um, that Peter David did, where he was a mainstay in the book, connected to all these Marvel characters, and he continued that on into the less successful Captain Marvel series after that. But there's some gorgeous stuff by the artist Chris Cross. So it's like, um, you know, something if you read, he was the mainstay of all that stuff. And then of course, you know, we've already talked about him in. Um, 
Avengers Forever. So and that's I think Kurt Busiek's um, first foray in really doing Rick as a regular, like a big part of a series. So, you know, there's some other stuff besides what we're talking about in the early Marvels in the late 60s and 70s and 80s stuff. You had stuff that happened in close to the 2000s to, to look at. And then, you know, I put up the cover, The Immortal Hulk with Rick Jones at the at the cemetery with the plane. Well, this is, I mean, this is for me, I mean, one look at this and it just brought me back and it encompasses everything about Rick, about Rick Jones from start to, to finish to be part of the character. I mean, you get the whole line with the whole whistling past the graveyard and here he is, he's playing in the, you know, in the graveyard, which is pretty much where the character started. But he's got the, the same outfit, he's playing the harmonica, same hairstyle, and then the Hulk, you know, just looming, looming in the background, but at the same point, so big, you know, just, you know, this is this larger than life thing, but still in the background, something that's supposed to be coming in and also tying into the whole thing where the Hulk uh, only came out at night and then they tried to, uh, they tried to tie it to the, like the moon uh, when, during Peter David's run. But this right over here, see, this is something that if, if you know, if you're a real comic head and you're really into the comic, so when you saw this, all that stuff should have just came, you know, rushing at you. But all this stuff is that you can put that stuff into the film. It doesn't have to be exactly what you got in the comic, okay? But there's so much there that you can actually pump right into the film. And I already know how these guys want to operate. This isn't even Marvel any longer doing it. This is Disney. Disney doesn't cancel anything, okay? Disney doesn't cancel. They're like, no, we, we got this. We're going to make Winnie the Pooh forever, okay? Forever at the end of the day. We don't care. We, you know, Winnie the Pooh, Honey, Tigger, uh, Christopher Robin, we're going to do this until the earth isn't here anymore because this, people love this stuff. And they do this, they're going to do the same thing with the Marvel stuff. It's just a matter of time. But Rick Jones, this would have been great to see him already. I mean, you could have brought him in. That's the thing with the character. You could have brought him in in any of these films and it would have worked. You could have brought in any Captain Marvel or Captain America or the Avengers or Iron Man. Any of these characters, he has a connection to all of them. So use it at the end of the use it at the end of the day. Especially since he's a kid, you can bring him into somebody young and you can really last the test of time because these films are gonna be around. Oh please, they're never gonna stop making these films. <laughs> well then, so look, all I'm saying is that in terms of this is that this character, you know, which you guys are trying to make it seem as though he's an average Joe, but does attain power in several different iterations from the Hulk, um, the A bomb to Captain Marvel to um, uh, so I mean do we need to see he's basically become another super powered human, right? Is no, that, that's no that's that you know because he didn't have more Captain Marvel power. No, by the, by the time so yeah. the, the fact of the matter by the time he get, you know, by the time we get to Immortal Hulk, this issue, he he doesn't have powers and to be honest, he looks like he's about to die. <laughs> Well, I mean, I think I think um, you can say that they've done all these movies without him. You know, for me, I always thought that you know, since it was the Hulk was going to be in Ragnarok, might as well have him sitting around there as his you know friend. And then we come back to when he gets shipped back to Earth, and then you see you have a big moment where Captain America is like had that same moment where. <laughs> Whatever you can have that moment because you got you already cast Rick Jones. He looks exactly like like um Sebastian Stan. Sebastian Stan. And then you get to this guy doesn't have Sebastian to. Sebastian can't play every role. Okay, Everybody two roles can. just like um what's the name like Kate. Sebastian Stan is playing Tommy Lee. He can play <laughs> he can play he can play multiple roles. It's done. He can't it's play, He's playing he can't Tommy. Play. He can't play um, Luke Skywalker. I mean, everybody wants him to play everything now. So let's. They want him to play what? Luke Skywalker? Luke Skywalker yeah. He got a shot where he looks like him. Yeah. The one in, I think, the, the Return, of, Return of the Jedi. But I mean, no, yeah. That one. I think, I think, um, oh, I think if you look at it, you. Oh, what can you say? That's what happens when you get a, a strong following. Well, you have all these characters that are, that are already. You have all these characters that connect to these other characters, like Monica Rambeau to Miss Mar to Captain Marvel. Now you have these things where they're introducing those characters. Now they just don't have them. Like only when Cap has is um, you know, well, no Cap has the Falcon in these other stories. So you have these other characters. Why can't we have a um, you know, a Rick Jones? If you have all these human characters with. Um, not like, um, obviously not like, um, 
I don't know. So most of the time, some of them are just superheroes. But we have Bill Foster in um, in the what's the name in the Ant Man series, and he was in the early Avengers story. He's introduced there. What I'm so. saying is, if they want, make some IDW books of Break Jones, put them over there, and go oh away. By them. You can do a TV show. You don't even have to call it. You can do days made like the same way you do Buffy and all those other teen teen stuff, and have them rolling around. A TV show in the obscure parts of the Marvel Universe. I always wanted to do that with Wyatt, but you got Rick Jones, or you can do an animated series with him, right? That's his classic Marvel. You I'm know, gonna be very interested in watching that. Going around into the oh my gosh, you just want to see the evil versions of other characters, huh? That's I take cool. offense to that. I take offense to that. I take offense to that. Everyone else does. Why do you? All the rest of the fans want to see the evil Doctor Strange. Why would you get offense offended by that? I because it's true. <laughs> and it's always been true. Always, he's always preferred the villains to the heroes. Always. Nobody is, everyone that they already said it to me. Only one who's always complained about that stuff is me, right? I'm the one complaining while all the other fans out there saying, more, more, give us the evil versions of these guys. No, no, I never say that. I'm not, that's not my thing. That's not my shtick. What, what? Oh my God, that's not your you, stick. You were the, you were the what, what we did Obi Wan. What was, we did that whole thing that reimagined fight between Darth Vader and Obi Wan. Oh, yeah. We had to restrain you from jumping up and down. Every you're like, yeah, this is the way it should have been. Yeah, beat him again, kick him again. <laughs> and then we got we had to take a beating from all the fans. But you guys didn't want to listen to it. I was telling you what people wanted to say, but you guys wanted yeah, to... That was, that's another video altogether. When I do Obi-Wan Kenobi, greatest of all time. Hey, people can dream. <laughs> all right, so... So we, we, good, we, right? we put this we put this to rest. Rick Jones, you know, and I'll interpret what we, what we just discussed, this whole thing, that we've just decided that Rick Jones really wasn't, isn't a character. It should be there. He's already cast. Next episode, we're going to talk about the. <laughs> well, I'll we'll get to that later. All right, let's sign off. Spin Rack. Out. Out. Don't comment. Don't subscribe. Uh, if you want to subscribe for anything, this should not be it. This is it. <laughs> you can't, can't do that. Be it. You can't do, okay. you can't do wow. that. You can't I'm not supporting the Rick Jones madness, and I'm telling you that right now. You this. cannot tell the people don't subscribe. Go watch another video and subscribe well, based off of that. But Rick Jones? I want, I want to curse you out so bad, say some foul things about you. This is just the you worst. You say foul things about me all the time. So, so on camera, it's going to be bad. <laughs> it's going to be 